In this video, I'll be showing you how to create an electronic symbol, a component footprint, and a 3D CAD model of an electronic component in Fusion 360. This is part one in a three-part tutorial series. In subsequent videos, I'll introduce how to create an electronic schematic, design a board layout, and render a 3D CAD model of the PCB. We'll then send this design off to the video's sponsor, PCBWay, to have the physical board manufactured. To kick this tutorial off, if you don't already have it, you'll need to install Fusion 360. While I'll be using the paid version of Fusion 360, you can also download a free trial under a hobbyist license. Once you've installed Fusion 360 and launched it for the first time, this is the view that you'll be greeted with. At the top here, we have a selection of different tools for creating uh, 3D CAD models, but we're not interested in modeling that today. We're interested in the electronics design. So instead, I'll go over to this left panel, uh, create a new project, and I'll give that a name here. And then I'll go inside the project. Now I'll click uh, File, New Electronics Design, and this will open up a blank electronics workspace. I'll start by saving this workspace. And in the top corner, there are four buttons. If you have an existing electronic schematic or PCB document, then you can reference and link to them using the icons with the chain. However, since we're starting from scratch, I'm going to go and click on the icon with a plus symbol in the bottom right corner. I know when I first saw this screen, I was overwhelmed at all the different tools and menus, but don't worry. we don't need most of this, uh, at least to begin with, and I'll break down the more important tools as we go along, step by step. To make it look a little more inviting, I'll go ahead and hide the side data panel just with this X. Uh, if you ever want to bring it back, you can just hit these uh, this grid of squares, and that'll close it out again, either or. And then I can also close off these side panels, uh, the design manager with this double arrow on the left-hand side, and then going over the, the right-hand side of the screen, I can close out the inspector with the double-sided arrows here as well. Now I'll just go ahead and save this schematic. To start off, we'll add a new part to our design by clicking this button up the top. This brings up a list of libraries that contain various components. Your list of libraries won't look the exact same as mine because I've gone ahead and installed some uh, for different projects as well as creating some custom libraries as well. One library that we should have in common is the resistor library. So if we go ahead and click on that, looking inside the resistor library, we can find a variety of different designs, each with an electronic symbol, a component footprint, and a 3D CAD model. To add this component to our design, we can hit the OK button down the bottom, and I can just place it anywhere I want, just uh, left clicking. I place multiple copies of this, and if I want, I can also rotate the component around by uh, right-clicking. So I can uh, play around with the orientation quite a bit. You can also modify the orientation and mirror the component using these buttons up the top here. And then when you're happy, you can just press the OK button or the Escape key. I went a little crazy adding resistors, and I want to get rid of all of them except one. So to do this, I can click on the orange crosshairs and press the Delete key. Or alternatively, I can use the backspace key. Another option is to go up the top and use the trash can icon, and that allows you just to go around and hit multiple ones, each in the orange crosshairs, removing them as we go. And then escape to deselect the trash can icon. You can see uh, it's selected at the moment, then if I hit escape, it deselects it. Zooming in, uh, there's a couple of options. If we're not happy with the placement, we can use the key to hit the orange crosshairs and then move it around, or use the right hand click on the mouse to rotate it around again. If you click on the gray crosshairs, that's gonna move the label around, but not the component itself. If I wanted to rename this component, I could go up the top and select the name tool and clicking the orange crosshairs, change the name of the component. But standard convention says to leave the resistors labeled sequentially R1, R2, R3, and so forth. So I'll revert it back to that uh, just to avoid any confusion there.
So this is the first resistor, R1. One feature that you should change is creating a value for this resistor. At the moment, it's just kind of an ambiguous, uh, could be any value we want. So if I go to the top right corner, I can select on this tool, which is going to give us a value and orange crosshairs. I want this resistor to have a value of 470 ohms. So I'll go ahead and enter that and you can see it's been displayed. What happens if the library or the component you want to use isn't available? In most cases, we'll still be able to search and install the appropriate library. To do this, we can go up to the add part button again. And if the library we want isn't already here on the left, we can go down to the open library manager button. And this will bring up a new window with three tabs. The first tab is the InDesign tab. So this is all the libraries that are currently in use in our design. So obviously at the moment, uh, I just have a resistor in my design. Then going over to the second tab, In Use. This is all the different components, different libraries that are ready to be used. And then the third and final tab is a list of all available libraries to that you can install if you want. So say, for example, I want to install a library with some component, some battery components. I can search for batteries, and then I can choose, say for example, the SparkFun batteries, and then hit use. And that's gonna move, as you can see down the bottom, move SparkFun batteries to the in-use folder or the in-use tab. So I'll go back over there, and then looking for that, we can see that there it is. The SparkFun batteries is ready to use. So exiting out of the library manager, and then here we are, SparkFun batteries. So generally speaking, uh, if the components that you're looking for aren't available immediately, you can check out the library manager. If you're just starting out, I'd highly recommend installing most of the SparkFun libraries as they contain a fairly comprehensive set of most common components. For example, I've got some capacitors here, various connectors, jumpers, LEDs, resistors, and switches. So a lot of your basic components they'll have so this is great. We've figured out how we can install different uh, packages, different libraries to find different components. But what if even after searching through the library manager, we still can't find the component that we're looking for? In this case, we can create our very own library, complete with an electronic symbol, board footprint, and 3D model. But before diving into that, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video series, PCBWare. PCBWay offers an amazing service for quickly manufacturing high quality and affordable PCBs. As you'll see later in this series, I sent this very design that I'm working on to PCBWay and a short time later I received the physical board in my hands ready to assemble. If you're watching this tutorial, then I'm sure you have a PCB in mind that you want to fabricate. So when you're ready, head over to PCBWay to bring your design to life. To create an electronic library, Start by finding the data sheet for the component that you're modeling. Today I'll be creating a voltage shifter with part number 74AHCT125 in a 14 pin dual inline package. I'll keep the data sheet ready to reference later on. To start, I'll go up to the corner and select File New Electronics Library. I'll quickly save this library. Then by clicking the second leftmost icon, we can create an electronic symbol. I'll give this a name for the part. To start off, I'll turn on the grid lines down the bottom. Display on. And uh, before exiting out of this, it's important to keep the, the size values uh, as the defaults here. They should be set to a size of 2.54 millimeters or if you're working in inferior units of uh, inches, leave them at 0 0.1 inches. Uh, deviating, from the, deviating from these conventions will cause issues and some of the components won't line up, they won't join correctly. So don't deviate from these kind of standards. You can also use uh, mil as a unit of measurement if you want as well, but go ahead and turn that on. I'll start by drawing the outline of the symbol we want using the line tool. So on the grid, I can go and place these lines. Okay. Next, I'll add the 14 pins coming out of the component using the pin tool. 
It's important to note the orientation of these pins. I have the gray uh, circle facing outwards. And so when I come to the other side of the, the component, I'm going to rotate that pin around by right clicking to have the, the gray circle facing outwards. And OK. Using the name button, I'll go through and name each of these pins in accordance to the names that are given on the data sheet. So the first pin will be 1OE, second pin 1A, 1Y, and so on. Lastly, I'll use the text button to add the part number to this symbol. So 74AHCT125. There are a few different formatting options here that you can play around with. I'll leave it as default and then just hit the align in the center button and I can place that on, on the drawing. And OK. So this is our electronic symbol completed. I'll go ahead and save it. And now we can switch over to creating a component footprint for this by clicking on the third leftmost icon, create new footprint. And again, I'll give this a name. The electronic footprint is a design of what the component holes will look like when printed on a circuit board. I'll again start by turning on the grid leaving it at the default settings. Then I'll start placing the pads that the component pins will be soldered to. There are two options, one for SMD pads or surface mount pads, and one for PHT pads or plated through hole pads. There are several pad shapes you can choose from. I'll go with an oval, and if you want, you can also change the hole diameter when you're using a larger component but for now, I'll just leave it at the default value. I'm deliberately placing the holes at a spacing of 2.54 millimeters, as this is the standard for dual inline packages, but always consult the data sheet and place the pads in the correct location for your device. Once again, using the naming tool, I'll go through and name all the different holes. Finally, I'll create a rough outline of the package using the line feature. The notch at the top indicates the orientation of the component and avoids soldering the component in the wrong way. I'll create a label for the part number. Now that we have the footprint modeled, I want to create a 3D package for this component. And to do this, I can go over to these three dots on the left. So uh, right now I'm under footprints, the three dots, click that and then create new 3D model. Um, I can save it, uh, I'll call this the page. I'll save that. If I wanted to create a 3D CAD model from scratch, I could go over to this solid tab and then use traditional CAD modeling tools to build up the component from scratch. But this would be a fairly slow and tedious process. So I'll go back over to the package 3D tab and then pull up the 3D package generator with this button here. This is a powerful tool for parametrically modeling most common electrical components in literally just a few clicks. The component that I'm working on today is a dual inline package or a DIP component. So I'll click on this one here, the DIP, DIP. Here we can define the measurements as provided by the manufacturer's specifications on the data sheet. So for my one, uh, like the default value is 16 pins, but the chip we're using only has 14 pins. And then pulling up the data sheet on page 13 shows the dimensions for this particular component. Uh, you can see for the length of the component, it's given in the measurement uh, with letter A and it has a range of 19.15 to 19.94 millimeters. And comparing this to the package generator, we can see that the package generator uses the letter D to define the length. So you do want to be careful, um, not all data sheets will use the same naming convention as Fusion 360. 
and then for the letter D, the, the value provided is 19.69, which falls within this range. You could go through and customize all these parameters to match the data sheet exactly, but because this is such a standard device, I'm comfortable with these default values. All I need to change is the number of pins. And then I can go ahead and press the add button. And close this. And you can see we've automatically generated a 3D CAD model of our component. And if we zoom in really close, we can see that the dimensions between the 3D CAD model and the PCB uh, footprint uh, matches perfectly. So I personally don't really like seeing the sketch layer. So I'm going to go ahead over here and just press this eyeball just to turn it off. And then we're left just a view of the 3D CAD model. So I'll go ahead and save this and finish. And you can see now that the footprint is linked to the 3D model. We now have all the constituents that make up a component library in Fusion 360. However, each of these parts currently live in isolation. We need to link them together into a single device. To do this, I can go up into the corner clicking the leftmost icon to create a new device. I'll readjust the windows a little bit for better visibility. And then up here, I'll go ahead and add a part. And this is the, the symbol that we drew earlier. And I'll insert this in the center, right in the middle of those crosshairs. And hit OK. Down in the bottom right, I'll click New, Add Local Package. And here we can see that there's the footprint we designed, as well as the 3D CAD model. So I'll say OK to that. And now to join the symbol to the footprint, I'm going to go down and click connect. The left column represents a list of the pins and the right column represents a list of the pads. So assuming you've named them in the correct order, uh, you should be able to just go through and check that pin 1A connects to pad 1A, then approve that by connecting it. Uh, 1OE connects to 1OE and you can just go through, connect all of those and just verify everything looks correct over here. They're all ma matched up correctly and OK. Now the device is created. We can just save that and exit out of the out of these tabs, going back to the schematic here. I'll delete these components and then go up to the add part and scrolling right down to the bottom, we can see the library that I created, which is called YouTube Dem Demo Library in this case. And the component we created, we have the symbol, the footprint, and the CAD model. If for whatever reason uh, it doesn't automatically load up here, you may need to manually add the library. So you can go to the library manager, go to in use, and then add from team. And you can just select the, the library that we created. So you can go ahead and select. Um, it's already already set up for me, so I don't need to do that. I'll exit out of that. And we can just drag and drop that into our design. Okay. I will save this. Then top left corner, we can switch to a PCB document. And this gray or this dark gray area rather represents the the board area and I can move the component that we just added somewhere into the middle here, press OK. Save this as the board uh, PCB. Save that. And lastly, back up in the top left corner again, press uh, push to 3D. And here you can see a render of the, the simple PCB board that we have with the one component in there. So that's pretty exciting. I'll go ahead and save this as a 3D model, save. And going back to our overall file, we can see that we have the schematic, the board layout, and then a 3D render of the top of the PCB and the bottom of the PCB.
I hope you found this tutorial useful. While the information is entirely free, if you did want to support me in creating more educational content like this, I recently launched an account on buymeacoffee.com. Buy Me A Coffee gives you the option to support my work with a one-time contribution instead of being locked into a monthly payment plan like Patreon. That said, if you are passionate about the content I create, there is also an option for a monthly membership to provide ongoing support while also giving you access to member-only perks such as behind-the-scenes content. If you're interested in this, please consider checking out the link in my description, but don't feel any obligation to do so. My videos on YouTube will always remain free and publicly available. In the next video, I will show you how to take individual components and assemble them into an electronic schematic.